Hi, this is Chris. Welcome to my channel and welcome to my new subscribers. Thank you for subscribing. Today I'm going to be working on page 8 in my repainting my watercolor travel journal from 40 years ago. I will do a flip through now. I'll show you last month's image. And that was the wildflowers. And I'll do a complete flip through at the end of this series, probably at the end of the year. Or you can look on the playlist and see the previous uh, pages that I've already done. So this month is this page. I'm going to do two separate videos for this. I'll do this one today and then I'll do this one next month. Because I painted this on site 40 years ago, I probably could paint it from this but I decided to get some reference material just for some ideas of oak trees. This one has a trunk structure similar to this one. So I will put those up in front of me where I can see them. This was in Oroville, California where my father and my uncle had a orange orchard. It wasn't their occupation, it was their, how would you say, their gentleman's farm after retirement where they could get outdoors and do some work and enjoy nature. And the oranges did pretty well too. I'm going to start with my 2H pencil which I dropped and so now I have to sharpen it. While I was looking for my sharpener, I found this 2H refills, and there's quite a few in here. So I'll just put a new one in there. I've had this for years and years and years, and it was $10.80 for one dozen refills. It looks like they've lasted me a long time. So with this kind of mechanical pencil you just push the plunger and the lead goes in there and it's gripped. Now we have a 2H lead. I will try to correct the exposure so you can see the pencil drawing. I don't want to make it too dark. But I'm going to go ahead and paint in the background and because the trees are silhouetted and they're so dark I can paint them on top of the, um, the background. So it's a bit of a sunset. Um, the orchard was on a hill so the trees went downhill a little bit here and then there were some bushes and then in the background there's a little bit of the town that you could see and then the hills beyond that. I have two containers of brushes this one and this one and this one might be big enough for the washes. These nice Robert Simmons brushes. These are new. I'm finding about myself some new brushes. This is a number 12 watercolor round. And this is a number 14 watercolor round. This is my old one. You can see they tend to flay out a little bit. The ends of the bristles um, tend to split a little bit, sort of like having split ends in your hair. I have 
This Princeton art brush would be good for flat washes. I'm switching to this smaller brush. This is just an inexpensive Walmart brush from Hello Hobby. doesn't have a size. It comes in a set of different sizes. I mostly use them for acrylics and things that will ruin a good watercolor brush, but they actually work pretty nice for watercolor and I need something a little bit smaller, but not as small as my brushes that I use for botanical painting. I'm going to start on the trees, and orange trees are very green green, but I don't want them to be too um, obvious, so I will mix my greens. Now I need to figure out where to put my tree. So I think I'm going to put a piece of tracing paper over this and try different areas where I want my tree until I get it just the way I want it because once I paint it on top of this I can't really change my mind. So I'll go find a piece of tracing paper. I have this really large sheet of tracing paper. This comes from the newspaper I used to work for. I worked there for many years and one day I found this package of tracing paper and I said, does anybody ever even use this anymore for layouts? And everybody said no. And I said, can I have it? And they said yes. So I got this nice bundle of Vintage layout tracing paper. I'll stick this down with a little painter's tape. Actually, I'm pretty happy with the shape of this tree. I think I'll just trace it.
I have my tree the way I like it. It looks balanced, like it's not going to fall over. This branch that was over here, I made into a separate tree because it looked like it was going to pull the whole tree over. So now I'm going to take this off. I'm going to put this down here just to protect my board. I'm going to turn this over. I know this is really hard for you to see. Maybe I can Now I'm going to trace all my lines again in a nice dark line. Another thing about turning this over is I can see if I still like the composition, and I do, so I don't want to change anything. Now I've made myself a transfer so I can lift this up. I can turn it over and I can decide if I'm happy with that. I think that looks good. Now all I have to do is trace it again and my pencil marks from the back of it should show up on top of my painting. Now we'll check to see if it transferred. Since I used a H2, which is a hard pencil, and not a soft pencil, it may not show up a lot. But I think it shows up good enough. So now I can go through my pencil and just mark the lines a little um, cleaner. It's difficult to see, but I've transferred my pencil lines. And as you can see, I'll com be completely covering up my little path, most of my town, most of my buttes that I put in before. But they're not the subject, they're just the background. So now what I need to do is I need to mix up enough paint for each section so that I don't get too hard an edge or a drastic color change between sections. I'll paint a section but I'll move my brush around. I won't it won't be a solid color. If you look at the one I did 40 years ago you can see there's quite a variation. There's a lot of black pigment in here and I don't use black anymore. I mix my own darks. But there's also some brown in here. A little bit of uh, green mixed in with the black there's some lights and darks, so it's not just a solid silhouette. So next I will mix up some colors and I will just 
Start painting in different sections. I've given each tree a slightly different color in underpainting. This one's more purple, this one's more brown, this one's more charcoal gray. And then as I paint them, that'll give them some individuality. So now I'm going to be sure this is dry so my color doesn't lift, and then I will paint wet on dry for another glazing layer. happy with the trees and the bark and stuff and now I want to do some more twiggy stuff so I need a brush that's long and skinny to make twigs and I've got this Robert Simmons liner so I'm just going to get my liner brush with some paint and then I'll just come out wherever I want to come out heading for the sky and the sun you kind of roll it as you go Next I want to put some foliage in here. Let's refer back again to our original painting. And you can see I have some foliage around there. Our reference photos are fairly bare, winter time, so they don't have any foliage. So I'm going to use a sea sponge. I have here a little jar where I keep my sea sponges. 
you can buy these singly or in bags. If you look at a if you want to buy one and you're purchasing a bag, look for different textures within the sea sponges. Cat hair is optional. This one has a really fine uh, um, texture to it. In fact, it looks like a bush. These are more open with larger chunks. And this one is good right in here. This one is real good right in here. Whoops, little piece came off. And I think I have some smaller pieces too, probably in my travel bag. So I have these little ones in my watercolor travel bag. And cat hair is just what I deal with. I'll show you a picture of Buddy and you'll see why I deal with cat hair. So these two are good. What we need to do is get them wet, soften them up, so I just dunk it in some water like any sponge. Blot the excess water out and I kind of fold it up in my hand like that. It's very springy. And I'll just start with a fairly light color. Rotate it. You can see how it makes these nice little shadowy leaves here. And I'll work darker as I get towards the edge and I'll leave some of the lighter leaves around this area because the light's shining through them. There's fewer leaves there. So I'll let those dry because they're starting to soak into each other. I'm going to mix up a darker color and one that's a little bit thicker, a little bit less water in it. I'm keeping to the bluer tones, a little bit of brown, I'm not putting in uh, green. And I'll take this sponge here. See if I can find a, a good leafy spot. I'm touching lightly. If I touch it too hard, it'll squeeze some of the residual water into the paint and dilute the color. If I wanted to, I could have masked around here with painter's tape or artist drafting tape, one of those, or even washi tape. I'm finished with this one. I'm happy with it. And I will yeah, it seems to be completely dry. Take my micron pen and I'll just frame it in. That's page eight. I'm going to call this page eight A. And this one will be page eight B. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned a few things from this and get a chance to try them out. And have a great day painting. Bye bye.